Before we jump in, a warning that we are an explicit book podcast. Yes, that means swearing, shitty jokes, and a whole lot of dark humour that some may take offence to. Please check your trigger warnings on all of the books we cover. You've been warned. The episode starts in three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> a book in a bed. <laughs> Hello and welcome to A Book in a Bev and the land of debauchery and degradation. 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 I can't say that word. Degra- I'm like, how do you degradation. say that word? I just I just want to say degra Station. Welcome to the fucking shit show. Your favorite podcast is back covering the smut busters that we think, well, that I think is <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> can I try that? So we, no, I'm taking it back. That's right. A book in America is covering The Dare by Harley LaRue. LaRue. Yeah. We're going to go with LaRue if we're butchering your name. Do not take offense to it because I love you. So this book is short, sharp, and shiny like Manson's oh. boots. What are we drinking? <laughs> well, I'm just drinking Onderberg ginger beer. I had a really big weekend, and if I started drinking while we were covering this book, I would not survive. So we needed to intentionally be sober. Fair what enough. I'm I'm in the same boat right now. You know, I'm just caffeine and water. I just need strength to get through tonight. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, I might be the only person that's drinking alcohol tonight because I'm drinking a Jack and Coke, and I've named it Walk the Dog. <laughs> the silence the as both Ellie and my jaws just went. Oh. We just both simultaneously pictured the scene that Georgia is referencing and mm. died. Anyway, so before we get into how we feel about this book, this is a very, very dark book. Well, there's a spectrum of dark romance. On my dark romance reader, it's about like in the middle of like midway to full way. You know, it's about, it's a kinky book. It's got a lot of different no. types of kinks. So when picking up this book, you need to be aware that it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. There are going to be a lot of people that do not like this book. And there's going to be a lot of people that really do like this book. And that's just the way that it is. That's the way that dark romance is. It's pretty much the way that all books are, but especially with dark romance. When books have the trigger warnings, they have them for a reason, so you should read them. I really like this book. Brownie and Ellie, it wasn't really their cup of tea. So if you did or didn't, this could be the podcast for you. Either or, you should listen. She's just hooking them in. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Let's get into how we felt about the book. Well, when I said that I liked Cirque du Soleil, I did not, in fact, mean clown fucking. Oh. But here we are. When I tell you that when I first read this book, I was in the lunchroom and I read the triggers and I looked up at Georgia and I went, clowns? <laughs> clowns. Can I just say, yes. I do appreciate that she put clowns in the trigger warnings. She mm. did. You know, I went on my little rant when we were reading Ice Planet Barbarians because our version, again, did not have trigger warnings and other versions did this one very clearly had trigger warnings so we'll get into it look i very much wanted to go into this book being like women's rights women's wrongs like georgia said there's a line with dark romance of where you sit and it was over my line not really my cup of tea but i mean the only thing that really kept me going through this reread was imagining that manson was the lead guy from melrose avenue um (laughs) yeah thank you for ellie for really like bringing this back into my mind right recently and I was like yes I can do this you're now. welcome having that man do this it made it better I agree um, yeah yeah guilty pleasure. It, it's reminding me of how we made Charlie Hunnam Uncle Jake <laughs> oh no I would have fucked Uncle yes. Jake regardless I like him <laughs> yeah but also gotta say um Manson not Mason Manson like a Marilyn Manson or like a Charles Manson mm, I take issue is that where we're going I take with it? issue what yes so there's a group of people on Goodreads that take the fact that he dressed dresses in dark clothing and he has the name Manson and they take that and they run with it. There has been no confirmation by the author Mm. that that is at all the same reference. And I mean, I'm not saying that the author intentionally named this character in a dark romance book after some problematic men, but given the darkness of it, it also wouldn't surprise me. Like a hundred percent? Yeah. Like whether intentional or not, that's just the vibe. I just don't think that that's 
what is intended. And I don't want to put people off of certain dark romance authors. Because oh, yeah, of, no, we're not yeah, about that. And look, the fact that they have similarities. When I first read this book, I thought that was like a, okay, yep, cool. I haven't read a book where Manson has been a first name for a male character. Mm. I've read like so many books with a Mason. So I just was like, okay, yep, it's a different vibe. I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole when I first started reading this because I'm reading the names. I'm like, Manson, okay, oh. that's fucking weird. But then I see his surname is Reed. And as soon as someone says the name Reed to me, I'm criminal minds. Spencer oh, yeah. Reed, right? Oh, and Spencer also, Reed. Jess's best friend is called Ashley Garcia. So now I've got two criminal minds oh. characters going on here. And when I tell you, I reread to try and find more submersive criminal minds <laughs> references because I was like, I see what you're doing, Harley. Turns out that that was it. Look, I'll take it. Criminal yeah. minds. Fuck yeah. It up. But yeah, all in all, like, like I said, this book wasn't really my cup of tea, but I'm here for the journey. And we, we don't yuck someone's yum okay i'm <laughs> sorry i won't yuck your yum but stop licking shoes is just purely unhygienic just for that level alone i don't understand and like why did she have to orgasm like seven times in one session without dying like is her vagina okay does she need some thrush medication is her vagina okay? like there is a Definitely. lot going on why does he casually own a knife who just has a knife these days that's just bizarre and where was her friend during this entire shindig, like just passed out in the mm. bathtub. Fantastic word, <laughs> Ash, like off you go, you do your thing. I came across a quote on Goodreads and I just, I really wanted to share it with you. Every paragraph I asked myself what life choices had led me to the point of reading about someone becoming aroused by worshipping boots. And I realise <laughs> now that my life choices have been becoming friends with Georgia and that is why I'm in this person. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You're forced into this situation. Yeah. yeah. But look, I will say I didn't read this in the right setting. Please picture me reading this book on the couch with two children under the age of four. It's yeah. just, it's not the right time to read about that type of kink. If I had some sexy mood yeah. lighting going on with some candles, maybe I could have gotten into it a bit more, but that was not my reality and that's okay. I'm not going to blame the author on that. I think if you took out the reality in the situation and just made it even more gothic, it would have been amazing. So I am very passionate about dark romance. So you'll see me in here. I get like, ah, I just love dark romance. I love everything about dark romance. Nothing has triggered me yet. So I am reading crazy books that are literally so outrageous, you know, and I haven't found that mark yet that has really triggered me. So I feel like I sometimes need to open my mind to more of like the way in which other people digest these books. You are a hardcore dark romance lover and we love that about you. And me and Ellie are on various other stages of the journey. <laughs> yes. I promise to slowly introduce you to the dark romance and here we are literally balls deep in the dare is dark erotica it's a novella that links to the losers series that has very newly come out it's not super high on my dark romance scale like i've read some that are like triple this but when you're coming from what we have covered in this podcast and then you jump to a book like this the jump is quite extreme as i've said that dark romance isn't for everyone it's a lot and the themes aren't always easy breezy to get through as they are in normal romance and it's important for these books to have triggers which round of applause for a dark romance author doing the bare minimum Absolutely. which is adding trigger warnings <laughs> this is also a very high kink driven novella so be prepared to bear witness to kinks that you may not like and you may question one's sanity for liking <laughs> either way this was actually the first ever dark romance it was the first ever spicy spicy book that i had ever read before this it was just calling her so I jump balls deep, literally into this. That is book. a sharp, that is such um, a yeah, now, sharp yeah. turn away from Coho. <laughs> yeah, and Whoa. if you can see my book, like it is, it has seen better days. Like it is trashed because I have read this like eight times, you know. And I just, whenever I have people around my house, I just whip it out, flick to a chapter, and start reading. <laughs> I'm a dark romance lover because of Harley. So I would just like to take the moment to thank her for not only being an LGBTQ plus author, but also writing some of the best spice of all time for me. So no, no, Harley. Let's crack into the book. We go straight into trigger warnings and kinks and fetishes. 
So no, I yeah, think, look. okay, I'm just going to read you out the warning and the kinks, okay? If you don't know, if you've never read The Dare, dear listener, and this is the first time you've tuned in, start here. This book is intended for those over the age of legal adulthood in Australia that is 18, okay? So all you 17-year-olds, fuck off. All characters depicted herein are over 18 years of age. This book contains graphic sexual scenes, including intense fetish, kink, and BDSM-related activities. This book is not to be used as a resource for sexual education education or as an informational guide to sex or BDSM. I love that she had to specify. Do not use this in sex ed. Do you know who I think Do needed not to have that? Use this as a resource. Sierra Simone. Where was that with the oil? <laughs> That's all I wanted. <laughs> okay. The activities depicted within this book are dangerous and the scenes within this book are not meant to depict realistic expectations of BDSM or fetish related activities. Okay. That's our warning. Thank you, Harley. Jesus. <laughs> so what I don't want you to do, dear listener, is take this book and say to your partner, I have a candle. I'd like you to drop this boiling hot wax <laughs> right onto my clitoris. Just avoid hot wax and knives, actually, as well, please. The way that my vulnerable vagina was just, I swear to God, I nearly had a breakout Oh, just imagining the contents of this. I, I, I was clenched quite tightly and not in a good way. <laughs> I was deeply concerned for her labia. Deeply concerned for her labia. <laughs> well, look, in fairness, a lot of people would say that about childbirth. They think it's equally as fucked up. So each to their own. Potato, mm. potato, if you will. Exactly. We move on to the kinks and fetishes within this book. She has them listed out, okay? Just listen along. Erotic humiliation, degradation, fear play, pain play, knife play, consensual non-consent, which I didn't know that was a thing, but I actually kind of enjoy that. Orgasm denial, boot worship, spanking, crying, blowjobs, clowns, group sexual activities, Fit, bondage, public play, blood play, raw sex, sex without a condom. I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. look, Ellie yeah. reading out a list of kinks is always enjoyable. That might exactly. actually be a kink in yeah. itself. Look, then we're diving straight in. And I mean, this book, like we said, it is short, sharp, and shiny. So we start off with part one, which is the game. It's Halloween, and we meet our FMC Jessica Martin. Jess and her bestie, they're basically in their slutty girl Halloween phase, aka insert the Mean Girls audios where it's like Halloween is the one time of the year where a girl can dress up as slutty as she wants. You know mm-hmm. that one? So we get this quote, Ashley and I had dressed up as angels, slutty, sexy angels. My sheer white bra would have shown off my nipple piercings if it wasn't for the pasties I'd slapped on underneath. And if I happened to bend over in my short satin skirt, people would be getting a view of my thong. Our angel wings were small, made of white feathers, clipped to the back of our bras. Fuck it up, sis. I appreciate the confidence. If I had the confidence, I'd I could do it. never. So I'm could just happy. Never. I'm happy you're happy. I'm, I'm you concerned know? about the bra um, placement. Where are the bras? Is it just a bra and a, and a skirt? It's just a bra. It's just, just a bra. bra and a skirt. Okay. That makes more sense because I, out, I, I she's out there doing Victoria's This secret. whole time I thought it was like yeah. this hideous low back top situation with just an ugly ass bra <laughs> strap. It makes me much more comfortable than just a bra. No, I'm thinking like early Victoria's Secret vibes. I like that. Yeah, um, go for it. As they're pulling up to get to this house party they're going to, Jessica realizes that someone, aka Manson Reed is in the truck behind them and she proceeds to freak out. He apparently almost stabbed someone in high school and they made out once but that was a year ago so we're ignoring that except for the fact that we're about to dive into a book where that is basically the sole motivation. (laughs) Apparently Manson had pulled a knife on Kyle which of course the American jock X is called Kyle. Only other thing that could have elevated it or made it more stereotypical is if he was called Chad. Yeah. Kyle was Jessica's on and off again boyfriend who at the time that she hooked up with Manson, he thought that she was cheating on him. She's like, we were on a break. Shout out to Ross Geller. But anyways. (laughs) Ross, um, what are you doing in this book? Basically, we get this other quote, which is, but as much as I had teased Manson, little stuck up cheerleader that I was, Manson teased back. We had the misfortune of our lockers being next to each other. So there was no avoiding the sight of his annoying face. There were days we would bicker back and forth in the halls all the way to class, name calling, insulting, laughing. So we're already picking up on the tension, on the angst, on the vibes, the bully romances. I love 
bully romance. I love it. I'm realising that this is because you bully Aiden. I do yes. bully each other, but I'm quite bad. <laughs> do you know what, though? I had a very uncomfortable time in my teenage years because boys liked to pick on me, but because I was like a little baby giraffe, I was just a mess of pale, skinny limbs that had not yet discovered mascara. And I used to get picked on a lot by the boys until I got hot. And then I found a hot best friend and then they all just came running on back to me and it was fucking gross. No bully romance here. Yeah, I just got bullied. <laughs> <laughs> there was no romance. Just, just bullying. Just yeah, bullying. No, no, I didn't have any either. Okay. Manson and Jess connect eyes and it's loaded. Okay. It's like some loaded fries, which would be delightful right now. Oh, why would you bring loaded fries? As well? I know. Yummy. I know. We have a quote. Maybe he didn't remember me at all. Yeah, right. After that smile, I, he remembered everything and so did I. That grin had thrown me right back in time, conjured up the image of Manson's face when he was escorted to the principal's office. I'd known what Kyle was going to do and I'd tried to warn Manson the day before. I told him not to come to school and he'd come anyway. Literally. When all the boys were finally dragged out of the bathroom, Manson had been the one taken away by the campus guards. He had a big purple bruise on his cheek, a drip of blood running down his chin from a split lip, and he'd look right at me as he passed and smiled. Which, not going to lie, that's kind of hot. That's hot. I go absolutely fucking feral for, like, the college, high school, like, scene. Like, the thought of, like, there's tension, there's angst, enemies, and then walks past with bloody lip and smiles. Miles? I know. That's what gets me. The, I've been punched in the face, but I know I've actually come out on top of this and I've never been happier. Jeez. Just that, that tiny touch of a psychopath that we love because it says a lot about us. Yeah. So Jessica hadn't reached out to Manson since this whole escapade to protect her reputation because she's the popular cheerleader, remember? She's the it girl and he was just not it. That's the dynamic here. But now that we're back in the present time, Manson is giving her a lot of stares. He's just locking those eyes, raking them up and down her body. And he's also got white eye contact lenses in, okay? That's freaking me out. Just the one white eye. Yeah, he's got one. Creepy. I do have to remember because like, kind of like what you were saying, Ellie, when you were talking about how you felt about the book, like, why were there clowns? I keep forgetting it's a Halloween yeah. Party. Like almost immediately mm. as she arrives, I forget <laughs> that. I'm just like, it's a party. I just forget that she is dressed up like an angel. He's obviously got a contact and like some suspender situation. And he's got a police hat. I forgot about that. Got like a vinyl yeah. police hat on this entire Yeah, time. look, that explains a lot of oh, yeah. why I didn't like him because I'm like, no, that's weird vibes, man. Weird, weird, weird vibes. Not no, my, my dad. dad. So they're playing beer pong. He's just eye candy. This is amazing. And he ends up challenging her. And she's like, I can't say no to a good challenge now, can I? That's her problem, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but I like how she refers to her being the popular girl and her now like becoming a part of the freaks or the losers, which is the name of the series, the losers. Uh. It all just ties in. Manson challenges our girl to a game of drink or dare, which is basically beer pong, but like some cups have dare written on the bottom of it. And there's like a bunch more like hateful banter between the two of them, which I love hateful banter. I love it. I froth it. Anyway, she gets in like a dare cup and she dares him to flush his own head down the toilet, which he just decides to drink instead, which I don't blame him. Yeah, no. He's got that one contact in the bacteria in the toilet. (laughs) It's not going to go down well for him. Oh, God, no, that's pink eye. Indeed, and he's already got a white eye. He doesn't need another (laughs) colour. So when he gets the shot in her dare cup, he dares her to kiss his boots for 60 seconds, which is a big yikes. But this is him testing the waters. He's basically challenging her because he knows that she has to win, but he knows that she's got this side to her that he wants to explore a little bit more. She accepts the dare and we get this moment. I glanced up and Manson smirked down. You look a lot better on your knees, Jess, he said softly. Soft enough that I don't think anyone else could have heard him over the music. And for some reason, the fact that he like said it just for her. Oh, I love it. Yeah, look, I'm okay with that until the, the licking happens, but I'm okay like if we paused, still still okay. Yeah. But yeah, she ends up kissing his boots and but she gets like super fucking horny doing it and is worried that someone will see her wet panties because she's face down ass up. Mm. Yikes. She's like Yikes. A horny Cinderella. It's just weird. Yeah, alright. Well she's okay. on her hands and knees a lot. Horny. It's, it's, uh, 
<laughs> doing other things, but you get my reference. A horny Cinderella, absolutely. <laughs> no. But yeah, so she wants to be degraded. So that is turning her on, the fact that everyone can see how she is like below him. Anyway, the game goes on and he gets two more dare cups in and this time he dares her to take off her panties and give them to him. So she's wearing this tiny, tiny little skirt and her Fanny is just... Fanny's in the wind. In the wind. (laughs) She obviously, again, doesn't want to lose. So here we are standing with no panties on in a college Halloween party, which is just screaming terrible decisions. He gets the panties in his hand and he sees the wet spot and he, like, makes eye contact with her and there's, like, fire in his eyes. The game goes on and she tries to get her panties back, but it doesn't work. He wins the game and his last dare was for her to basically be his slave for the night and because she lost here we are she is his tiny yeah. whore if you will his tiny pantyless whore <laughs> i feel like the conditions of my vagina would not allow for me to lose my underwear just out in the wind i just couldn't feel comfortable in a tiny skirt like i can do like long dresses no panties mm-hmm. like i can do that but a tiny little skirt no panties yeah no that is risque yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot okay part two the yeah the part the second part the part two of the book manson is like you do not have to do this and jess is like well hold my beer here we go so then remember ashley garcia her friend from the beginning she's there and she's like let's just bail it but jess is like no i'm kind of cool with this and ash is like well if this is your kink just say it because otherwise i'm gonna fuck him up you know i like that that's good friendship right there i do respect <laughs> it for a moment however in some alternate universe where the three of us were single and at this party and this scenario were going down i would not be so kind or supportive or cool with no. this situation. <laughs> I would make aggressive eye contact with him in his one normal eye until he <laughs> questioned his own existence. And then he'd probably just go away. I feel like there are people out there who really enjoy this extreme version of being degraded. Mm-hmm. I personally feel like I could never be mistreated in that sense. Not that it's, you know, never going to yuck someone's yum, but I couldn't deal with that yeah, being I don't degraded that much that. in public. No, it's yeah. the public thing you know? that's getting me. I was embarrassed and cringy for mm. her. When they were behind closed doors, I was like, yes. you do what you need to do. But those scenes when they were like around other people and she's just crawling around on the floor like some little horny dog, not okay yeah. with that. Yes. But anywho, it's not me making these decisions, so it's fine. So Manson's probably biggest mistake in this book is that he stops her from drinking. And look, no man will ever put my wine down, ever, if he wants to live. No, I've been there. I've been there where a man has gone, you need to maybe slow down. And I've gone, I'm going to ghost you now and we're never going to speak ever again. Yeah, you no longer exist to me. So she's like us. She throws a bit of a fit. But then he calls her on her shit and she's like, oh, hang on, this is getting interesting. So she could walk away but she doesn't want to so he gives her her first task as his slave which is go crawl and get my beer jessica before i put you up against the wall and spank that cute little ass of yours until you figure out how to behave oh my god <laughs> that is incredibly attractive i'm sorry but like just the th- like the i will put you up against the wall and spank that ass Yes. I like that bit. Please. But imagine crawling around on your hands and knees in someone else's house and there's just yeah. people everywhere and you've got no knickers on. In the middle of a house party and the ground is going to be yeah. sticky. The ground is going Not to be sticky. sticky ground. And there's going to be little bits of hair and you're like, are these pubes? Or are these oh. I don't know what it is. <laughs> your knees are going to be like when you drop a lollipop mm-hmm. on the car. Yeah. 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 No one wants to have Ew. sex with that. And yet she's now like, oh, that's really hot, but oh, I don't really want to crawl on my knees like some kind of I've already made enough references to what she could be here so let's just leave that as it is <laughs> we have a quote I felt as if I was trying to work up the courage to pierce my own ears I knew I wanted it I knew it was going to hurt I just had to do it just stab the needle through and I feel like you shouldn't be comparing sexual acts with stabbing a needle as she's crawling on over there she gets about halfway and then she's like you know what fuck it so she gets up and walks back and he goes to her mm, no this shall not do and he takes her 
her for her punishment. This shan't do. No, no. He keeps the consent part pretty clear throughout all of this, which I appreciate. Confirming to her that he's not going to force her to do anything. And she's like, okay, cool, but still kind of force me to do it. Like I'm saying yes, but force me. And I enjoy that. This is good. I'm following along. And so is she because she's exploring something new that turns her on. So it's like, yes, let's do this. Can we just stop licking people's feet? That's just my one thing right now. Let's just remove that from here. He gives her a safe word as well, which I appreciate. And it's red, not the immaculate Taylor Swift album, but the color. color. Imagine having like just the safe word is just Taylor Swift. Taylor Swifty. (laughs) Not a wristy. A A Swifty. A A Swifty wristy. (laughs) Anyway, so he takes her to a room and makes her make out with his boot again. Cool. He then spits beer into her mouth. And I honestly, I love the thought of being degraded. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but my controlling nature loves and hates to not be in control in the bedroom. So as someone who literally cannot help but control every single part of her life, being able to lose control in the bedroom is something that is just like chef's kiss. I appreciate that. I'm the same, but I guess I don't like the degradation part of things. I'm okay with like the submission, like the dominant sub- submissive kind of vibe. Just don't spit on me, please. I've applied very mm. expensive if skincare someone... usually by that t- stage of night and I just, it's not worth it to me to have that wrapped off. Yeah. See, I feel like I am someone who is open to experiencing pretty much everything to an extent. Okay. Just don't piss on me. I swear where the fuck but I'm like, glad we clarify that for our podcast yeah. <laughs> no one don't no one piss on no, at any future meet and greet <laughs> just remember that's off the cards okay guys just please no one piss on me as we've all said it's just like reading books some kinks are just not some people's cup of tea so I feel like that's the fun thing about your personal bedroom preferences is that it's mm-hmm. yours and you do what you want to do so if you want to sub you sub if you want to be a brat you brat. Anyway, so we move on and we get this moment where she is like sat on his lap and he's getting ready to like give her her punishment, but she's trying to like grind on him. Naughty angel, very naughty. You really think that's what you deserve right now? He pulled me back his mouth close against my ear and he whispered, you deserve to have your clit aching all night. You deserve to have duct tape slapped over it so you can't touch while I crush your pretty little pussy under my boot. Mm. Um, can we oh, just can we just not smoke? Can we not put duct tape on the the vulva? <laughs> um, could just not do that. Imagine ripping that off. Um, <laughs> oh so no. Much. I feel like it wouldn't be as bad for someone who's a naked mole rat, but like for someone who has a little bit of (laughs) bush there, that would wow. Yeah. (laughs) Not bad for someone who's a naked mole rat. I'm always going (laughs) to picture your vagina as a naked mole rat now. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) Withholding climax is a big kink for a lot of people. And like, sure, but the duct tape slapped over the pussy while it's being crushed by By a a boot. boot. Just a lot. That is a lot. It's a lot for her poor flower. It's, a lot. it's just her poor flower. It's not being watered. It's wilting. It's it is. wilting. Mm, the punani. <laughs> anyway, so rest Sorry. in peace. So what? It, what? What were you going to say? Funny. I was going to say it's punopi. <laughs> punopi. Why? It's punani, and I was like, well, now it's a punopi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Ellie. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm up. sorry. Well, you know, we'll pinope right back into <laughs> the book. Rest in peace, her punani, her punopi. <laughs> Our girl is straddling him backwards. So picture this, right? Back to his chest. <laughs> and he leans her forward so her head is towards the ground and her legs are locked back, like behind his back. She's fully spreading. He's doing a downward if dog, if you will. She really is. Yeah. For some reason, yeah. I just pictured we- it as a crab, and I don't know why. <laughs> I love Ellie's uh, brain is just disassociating <laughs> really from this. Yeah. 
She's like, throw me anything else and I will oh, grab. I'm, I'm on the Little Mermaid right now. Anyway, we gave this quote, which is, I was completely melting in his hands. I was craving his touches, craving his grip. I began to shake as I was held there, bent over, helpless except for the safe word that waited tucked at the back of my brain, utterly unwanted. And um, can I just say, like, you need it, Yeah, girl. the reason you're shaking is probably because all of the blood has rushed to your head. It's not a sign of yeah. want. It's just a sign of your body reaction acting to the situation he's put you in voluntarily. I like the fact that she's unmelting with his hands, craving his touches, craving his grip, whatever, but you are being held upside down. That is, again, a lot of confidence just to be out take there. it as you will. So she's trying to be bratty and he spanks her and we get this moment, which is your cunt is cuter when your ass is red. Funny how that works. And just... <laughs> A little input here. I love the word cunt. For me, I presume it's like the word beautiful to some real, like, gushy romance lovers. Like, that, like, the word cunt is my beautiful. Okay. I love that is it. a very big analogy you're, you, yeah. you're pushing there. I just love the word cunt used in everything. everything. So instead of it's a beautiful cunt. day. It's a cunt of a day. <laughs> cunt it's of a day. cunt of a day. <laughs> Anyway. As, as an Australian person, I think on average we'd all say it at least three times in our day. Yeah, it's just... Hands down. Okay, I'm moving right. on. He basically plays her ass like the bongo oh. drums until she <laughs> begs him to stop. Oh. He then gets quite gentle and, like, checks in with her. And I really love a man that can do both bongo drums and also check if I'm okay after said bongo drums. Can you stop saying <laughs> bongo drums? I just, really... I just watched an episode of The Wiggles <laughs> where we were doing that. <laughs> and I don't need to see picture Emma Wiggle doing anything of this sort. He does player like bongos he's also now like she's still bent down and he's also got his he's hooked his leg around and he's pressed his boot to the back of her head pinning her down face first onto that sticky little lollipop ground Mm. and she loves it she's just absolutely gushing at this point she is like i need to come which she almost does but she's also in pain and then she ends up like begging him to stop he does she comes up and then he holds her for a moment which tender kindness we don't really care about that (laughs) she decides like yes i like you and yes i want you to fuck me and he's like i really can't make it that easy for you baby like you know we get this moment when i fuck you if I do, it won't be some quick fuck on a couch. I'll make you scream. Oh, we've got a screamer, everyone. Another one. It's not again. Like every other book at this rate. Can I also just say that everyone's so vocal. during this scene, uh, there is a horror movie playing in the background, and we keep getting snippets of yeah. what the horror movie is doing. <laughs> Obviously, Georgia is our smart fucker gal. Like she's the one who's like dark romance spice queen. I've slowly been reading more and more like novella style smart. Busters. This is the thing that's happened in a couple now, like Spicy Books, where you have a scene and then in the background there's some sort of media playing, but you get snippets of that. And it's just a real interesting setup to me. I know. Um, I'm like, what's the deeper meaning behind the horror movie happening while she's being spanked? I think just dark. Like, mm. set the scene, it's supposed to be spooky, creepy, and this book is actually under like the horror genre. Mm. So, yeah. It's that kind it's of the clown. It's the clown. Exactly. So Jess is in Manson's lap. She's recuperating. He's letting her recover from the bongo drum playing on her booty and her naked mole rat. <laughs> and Jessica gets a bit gross. Even amongst all of this, he's been getting consent and checking in. And he says no to having sex. Like She's essentially trying to grope him and be like, no, like we should have sex now. I don't want to wait. And he says no. And she's like, no one says no to me. Oh, yeah. Because I am just like so hot. And just starts like grinding on him. Yeah. That's not the rules. That's not the setting. He's created an environment where no matter what your kinks are, like he's, like I said, he's checking in. He's creating the boundary. He's making sure you're okay. You've got a safe word. He said no. And you're like, fuck that because I should get what I want. Yeah. It's sort of like she knows where it's leading to. So she's just like, well, it's fine if I want it now. And it's like, well, if he's saying no, yeah. he's saying no. There's no, there's no gray area with that. Yeah. There's no gray area there. And so like he grabs 
to her hair and he says, when I say no, his voice was low, a warning, it means no, understand? Ooh. And I was like, wasn't expecting the male to be doing that in this book, but I thought that was actually a really good moment. She is, again, like, it's not fair. And Manson is like, well, boo fucking who? And she's like, I will use my safe word. And he's like, okay, use it. You're always safe to use it. But the moment you use that safe word, this encounter is over. Obviously, that is not what she wants. I think she gives me the ick. Like, throughout the beginning of this book, like, she's better towards the end. It's because she's fighting what she wants Mm, right mm -hmm. now. It's no excuse to be just a fucking idiot. Yeah. And this is a thing with a lot of bully romances. They get, like, the popular girl and, like, the outcast boy. And the popular girl, majority of the time, they all have this just way about them that just is Mm. like, get over yourself. (laughs) Yeah. I did also find rereading this for this episode, um, like, so she's the blonde popular girl you know ex cheerleader type thing and there's a moment it's when he gets her to finger herself and they comment on her pink acrylics oh god no i was like no biggest ick because you can just see it you know they're like the rectangles and then they're really thick acrylic and oh my god so then we dive into part three of the book which is terrifyingly called the clowns Oh, God. Yeah. So Jess is very quickly giving up on the idea of being a good girl and waiting to fuck Manson. She's horny. She's pent up. Her ass is nearly bruised from the spanking she received, and she's walking around this party without her undies still. So at this stage, it is close to midnight, and Jess comes up with this plan to basically go to the bathroom and just rub one out really quickly to ease the tension. It turns out Manson is actually really well liked at this party, and that's shocking for her. And while he's chin wagging, she's looking for some somewhere to warm up because again she's freezing and then we get this moment she's freezing up and he's like what's wrong clowns I hissed there's fucking clowns three men were walking across the yard from the side gate beers in hand laughing and shoving one another they wore matching black jumpsuits and their faces had been painted pasty white with black shapes filled in around their eyes and their mouths transforming their lips into wide jagged grins they weren't your typical bright circus clowns these were gestures from hell Even worse, I knew them. So the three terrifying clowns are Vincent, Jason, and Lucas, and they are Manson's besties. And guess what? She tormented them in high school as well. Because of course she Yes, if this is not the consequences of your actions. (laughs) They, like, start circling her, and they're like, well, 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 if it isn't Jessica fucking Martin. But Manson is like, no, guys, she's with me tonight, and possessively kisses her on the temple. The boys are shook and are like, whoa, 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 you're not going to share and the quote we get is share oh my god the thought of being shared by the four of them ordered around degraded punished it made my stomach tighten slowly strangled by a knot of tension and desire the very men i tormented i wanted it was so fittingly humiliating but god that clown makeup gave me the creeps True. The, the clown makeup, same, same sis. Unsure if I'm getting the kink for degradation, but I mean, I support your choices, honey bun. That's fine. Our girl Jess is like, I am horny and distressed by these clowns, but okay. We get some more quotes. Oh, don't be scared. We don't bite. Don't lie to her, Lucas laughed. Of course we bite. I'm stressed. Yes. Oh. At this stage, again, Jess is still, she was already horny and now she's horny, yeah, because of the clowns. And she's like, please, can we your fuck already, Manson? And Manson and it's like, no, 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 no. Say it louder for the people in the back. Don't whisper that in my ear. I want you to actually get a microphone and be like Kanye West at that award thing and be like, excuse me, everyone. Um, Beyonce had the best music video of all time, except it's that you want to fuck me and my clowns. <laughs> oh, my God. So many Taylor Swift references already. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't make any of them. So then Jess makes a break for it to go to the toilet to give herself a little bit of a rubber dub and she successfully manages to do so. She gets into the toilet. She's having a grand old time. We have a quote, which is, I wanted him to hurt me, hurt me, fuck me, make me scream. I'd irritated him. I knew I had. So there was at least the possibility of another merciless spanking awaiting me when I got outside. What if he did it in front of his friends? What if there was no privacy this time? I don't want to be well spanked in front of people. I don't want to be spanked at all, but not I all love, people. I love reverse harem. I love white shoes and I love polyamorous sexual Look, I'm getting more on board scenes. with that. Never thought I would because I'm a monogamy girl, but I'm getting more and more into it as our reading journey grows. That's what I what love I'm about not books. In, yeah. Like, what I'm not into yeah. though is reverse harem, but it's only blowjobs. 
Like, yeah. there goes the fun and the joy from the whole scenario. Why choose? Well, here, have three dicks, but you've got to suck them all. Why choose dicks? That's Why the question. choose dicks? Anyway, we're getting a knock on the door now, and guess who? It's Manson. And he pins her to the wall and is like, do you think I don't know a wank face when I see one, you little dirty slut? And it's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And her fingers are, like, sticky because she's been all up in that business, yep. remember? Yeah, she's the just opened the door. Fingers. She hasn't even pretended to flush the toilet and wash her hands like anyone else would. She's just been like, what? The yeah. Aussie band, Sticky Fingers. Oh. Manson is like, the audacity of you, Jessica. And she basically just ends up begging him to fuck her again. Again. So Manson is like, I'm about to put your used thong in your mouth like a gag. So bend over and spread them. Holy shit. Yeah. I'm uncomfortable Fine. with this. But, you know, she's quite flexible. Remember, her youth as a cheerleader has really prepared her for this moment. So she's just holding on for dear life, spreading her labia like she's having a pelvic exam. Yeah. And I am so uncomfortable. But isn't she's like hugging her ankles and just reaching up around and just getting on in there. In a former life, I was that flexible. But no, I think I'd fall over and do an injury now. The only time I was ever that flexible was when I was like an infant and like my bones Mm. weren't long. You know what I mean? Bones bones weren't Long. It's a short world, remember, guys? Small (laughs) child. Yeah, it's a short world. Let's not think about small children getting themselves in this position. No. Not in the sexual nature. (laughs) Jesus. Anyway, labia spread. So he says to her, fuck yourself, actually. And I'm just going to sit here, eye level with your coochie hole, and just stare into it as you do it, which is just... A lot for me. Very invasive. Very invasive. Of, he's staring at her naked mole right eye and it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. The only person who sees my vagina that closely is my gynecologist and I am keeping it that way, please. Mm. And even then, I feel like they don't really look. They kind of just like have a hard, have a, a rough guess of like, I'm just going to put this in. How's yeah. that? Did you have a nice day today? Oh, yeah, just a little bit of pain here. Oh, I love being a woman. Anyway, the author then mentions her acrylic nails. Here we go. Ah. Here they are. So she's trying to find the right angle to fuck herself with her nails and it's uncomfy. And she's basically just drooling outside of her thong now and she's bent over fingering herself until he tells her to stop. And again, I am uncomfortable, but I'm here for the journey. At this point, I'm like, what else can happen? (laughs) Much more, it turns out, but let's go. Wait. (laughs) So they kiss and it gets super hot and rough and they're like fighting for dominance. And I love a kiss like that when you know, there's two dominant personalities that are like mm. clashing and it's like, who will be the winner? But she ends up making him bleed by like biting his lip and he loves it. And then they pull away from the kiss and he's like, slap me, you know, like go on, do it. And then she's like, no, tell me twice, fuck it up. Smack, whacks him one. And then he's just so calm about it. And he's just like, well, now I'm going to have to make you cry. <laughs> Like, oh, right. So he's like, to make you cry, I must take you upstairs. So they go upstairs to his bedroom. Turns out he lives with the guy whose house it is with his family. And he started living there at age 18 because his father was very abusive. She yeah, ends I was, up- all of a sudden there was plot. And I was like, why are we doing this? Yes. I why didn't sign up for this. Yes. No, I'm here for crying. Where's the pain? <laughs> why isn't well, she this sobbing? Is a different type of pain, I suppose. Well, that's um, true. So she ends up apologizing. Like, she's like, I'm so sorry. And he's like, I don't want to talk about it right now, but maybe someday. So, you know, we presume that that will be next book. There it is. Put it anyway, in your calendars. That's it. So she agrees that, yes, maybe someday, and gives him, like, a little, little peck. And he's, like, shook by her and he basically is like you would fit right in with my friends speaking of my friends here they are (laughs) (laughs) we have to just be in the room with us just picture just three clowns emerging from the darkness i would react how she does i would be like yeah fucking no you guys know that i love horror movies i love that i love being scared so i think i would probably be into it Um, look i'm happy for you but anyway yes so there's clowns they're emerging and we get this quote which (laughs) i fucking love you wanted a dance with the devil jess well now you have four which yeah i I didn't i didn't ask for that though (laughs) <laughs> I don't remember I asked for one at this point. So Manson is like, everyone knows your safe word, so get on your knees and go crawl. He's got a real thing for crawling. He really likes the crawling. Yeah. Again, 
A horny Cinderella vibe. He's into it. Horny That's it. So we get this little tidbit. What did we used to tell you, Jess? You fuck with one of us, you fuck with all of us. Manson's voice rumbled eagerly from behind me, deepening with excitement. And if you want to fuck one of us, you fuck all of us. Which I'm disappointed mm. we didn't get to fuck all of them, really. Yeah, like you said Why that it and then it didn't this? happen. Exactly right. My least favourite thing to do. So she crawls over to them and offers herself up like Mary's womb to the Lord and Saviour, JC. <laughs> Except Wait. for the fact that JC is her son. Not her vagina hole. Well, even <laughs> what even happened there? Again, I'm not religious. Georgia wrote that joke and I'm proud to have said it, but well, you know, she offered up her womb to a child of God. She, and- and- she did. But I don't know if she did. No, did she? don't, don't, Ellie, just don't. Walk well, away did she? It. Let's get into it, guys. Everyone, <laughs> grab your Bibles, okay? <laughs> Didn't think we would be getting religious in this book, but well, I think it, it would be. Was, it would yeah. be the first time we became weirdly religious doing a smut book. Yeah, um, yeah JC, where you're at, mate? Oh yeah, God, been hiding this entire He's in time. Mary's womb. Anyways, so after she has crawled over and been like, "What's up? I am a buffet. Have at me, Vincent." handcuffs her and then Jason bucks her mouth. Lucas is just like pulling up next to him for some good visuals and we get this quote which is my eyes widened looking at him. His cock was pierced. A curved silver bar fitted through the underside of his head. I'd never seen that before. Never even thought someone would do that. And I could scarcely imagine how that would feel inside my throat. Can't say if I like, well, A, I've never seen a pierced penis. Well, in yeah. person. Yeah, we've Googled that before. Of course we have. Um, <laughs> but, uh, like, I can't imagine looking at it being like, I cannot wait to have that in the back of my throat. <laughs> yeah, that's going to feel great touching and my gag reflex. Yeah, Whatever and if anyone's is. seen yeah. the film The Sweetest Thing with Cameron Diaz, then there's a moment mm. in there where one of the women gets his penis gets stuck at the back stuck. of her throat because he's got a penis piercing. <laughs> I can't imagine. That's my worst nightmare. Just put me out of my misery. If that would ever happen to me, I'll be texting you girls. Just smother me. I really wasn't expecting Cameron Diaz in this episode, but here we are. Vincent is obviously just still chilling out, waiting to be sucked because Lucas is still being serviced. Manson <laughs> comes up and is like, so you want to know about my knife? Because remember how I put a knife on someone and that was a whole thing. And she's like, yes, absolutely. And so now we have some knife play. And the quote is, be a good girl for daddy manson jess he said a tease in his voice i'm sure he's already shown you what happens to bad girls hasn't he i don't know why because i don't know the character well enough yet the way in which Mm. daddy is used i feel like i need to have more character depth to be able to really go for the daddy king yes yes you know yeah i I agree i also don't like their names vincent jason and lucas i feel like they're just bland white boy names i don't like yes so at this stage she ends up taking like all of their jizz in like they're all finishing her mouth and she's just slurping it back like it's a slushy she nearly chokes on the last guy's jizz but then she smiles up at him and says thank you no girl has ever done that don't fucking lie not even in porn you can see it in their eyes how much they're they're like (laughs) and just imagine like we've we've discussed this before how ugly men's faces turn when they're jizzing and so just imagine you've had to deal with three of them but they're They've got clown face paint on. <laughs> if I've had that much jizz, again, put me out of my misery. Manson immediately decides this is the moment to tonsil tango with Jess. So I guess he now knows or is more familiar with what all of his friends' jizz tastes like, given that they've just one on top of the other in there. And also, how is her stomach faring right now? Because that's a lot of like jizz to have consumed. Yeah, I hope they had some pineapple juice at some point in that day. I really hope there's like she's got some sort of antacid type thing she can take she'd to be, help ease she'd that. She'd be so phlegmy. Like so she'd be phlegmy. so oh. phlegmy. <laughs> no. Oh my she god. Would be feel... Coughing up a fucking bunch of kids. Oh Jesus. Ew. Ew. Oh, I'm <laughs> grossed out. Okay, it's too much jizz. So much semen in this book. Okay. So now it's Jess Manson and Jessica now. Apparently the clowns just needed to have a little bit of a blowjob and and then they were on their merry way to go traumatise the next book. A quick gob so, and then... A quick gob smack and out they go. <laughs> it's like a Big Mac meal but gobbies. Yeah. Anyway, 
well, it's just the two of them now. And he has taken her back to bed and has a knife to her throat while she's just like grinding away the word they use here, like a puppy on his knee. And we, we don't need that comparison. There we are plenty of other things. We don't need to bring puppies into this. So he handcuffs her to the bed so she can't get herself off. And he says, you know what, babe? Like, you don't need to touch yourself. You don't need to grind on my leg anymore. I'm going to get you there. And do you know how I'm going to get you there? <laughs> Hot wax. Oh, Hot wax on your no. clip. Oh, no. I'm like, I'm into a little bit of wax play, like maybe like on your boobs, maybe on the decolletage area. That could work. That's a little bit sexy. Not on your clitoris. It's a little bit of fun, but don't put it on your pussy. Don't put it on your cunt. No, your cunt doesn't want that in there. Your, your cunt, naked mole rat. Your naked could mole do rat without that. has enough, you know, it's got enough going on down there. It doesn't need you introducing new things into the environment and disrupting the entire ecosystem. Leave it be. Leave it be. But anyway, he checks in with her again because, again, we're getting a little bit of whiplash, you know, but this is high kink. It's a lot. And it's her first time, well, from what he knows of her doing this. So he's like, you know, checking in. Are you all right? She says, absolutely, yes, I'm all in for it. He says that she's been a good girl, so she should now be able to come. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Rachel. Sorry. <laughs> I really wasn't expecting that. <laughs> we just ignore it. So <laughs> he eats her out till she comes. It's brilliant. But he's not done yet getting ready for overstimulation. So he gets the knife, right? He gets that knife and turns it so the handle is probing inside her cunt. We get oh, these gosh. quotes. You're going to get off on this knife, Jess, he said. And I'm going to hold you open nice and still so you don't get hurt. Screaming, <sighs> crying. Ah, next one. Uh, indeed. Look at me, Jess, right now. Don't you dare look away. I want to see all your pretty tears as you come all over this knife for me. Understand? I do understand, but I don't want to. That is a lot. Anyway, three years later, she finally orgasms. <laughs> and he's like, once is not enough. Now I'm going to hold the knife to your shaved mound. And then in words that we never thought we would say on this podcast, she squirts all over the knife. She does. She's a squirter. What is season. squirting? Educate me. I understand the premise, but I don't know what it is. Squirting is just another fluid that you can essentially train your body to ejaculate in at a high velocity. It's not we. Like ejaculate and urine. What hole does it come out of? That's a oh. very good question. So a study was done and was carried out where five women who can squirt empty their bladders and then inject blue dye into their bladder. The women who then underwent the usual stimulation required to squirt. When they did, it was found that the liquid was blue. So it comes out the bladder. So it's we. It's, uh, it's mostly we. Look. I'm not even going to go there. I'm not. Fair. Yeah, I'm not. I was going to that. like put a reference as to like why I don't like piss play. I'm not. I'm just going to say that I don't like it. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. It doesn't need an explanation. That's fair. So then they fuck again after he again gets her consent. And I'm just like, what is going on here? She keeps referencing her overstimulated clip. And oh, the over overstimulation is very distressing to me personally. And then he just juices inside of her to just really end on a banger really and how is she not dead yet but also i hope she's not pregnant because what a story of conception here and it's like oh yeah i mentally tortured your father all through high school and then met him again at a college party where i lost <laughs> a bit and became his slave and made out with his boots and he spanked my asshole raw and then i sucked off three of his best mates and used my hoo-ha as a wax melt <laughs> oh god romance of oh the my ages. God. Also, people get confused when I say I like breeding kink because I don't like the pregnancy trope. <laughs> so I like mm -hmm. breeding kink while the person is on contraceptive. So I like the people involved to be verbal about like, oh, I'm going to come in. you. I'm going to do this. You know, mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't like the yeah. pregnancy. Like everything else. Awesome. Great. Do you know what? I agree with you because yes. I have had conception sex. And it's that time where you've got a common goal. It's an, you're working on the same page. Teamwork. And I think that's what my issue was with, what was it? Court of the Vampire Queen? Mm. Oh, yes. Because it started off that way, like breeding kink, here we go. And then it just got a bit too plot heavy. And then she was pregnant halfway through. Yeah. Spoiler. Yeah. Yeah. Breeding kink, but with no children. Just really? filling her up like she's a gas tank. Okay. So they're lying in bed post-fuck and he asks her if it was good for her. <laughs> 
I just love, we've got this whole book of such extreme kinks, such like really intense stuff. And at the end, he asks a very basic normal question. Is that good for you? I enjoy the fact that throughout the entire book, you can tell that he's like someone that was bullied because he's like, it's it's this consensual, you enjoyed it, I enjoyed it, we can do it again. Like, is that... Is yeah, that, is I just want to make sure that, that we're on the same page here. <laughs> like, oh yeah. my goodness! Well, they are because they agreed to do it again, and yeah, I I feel like I'd be dehydrated at this point. But you know what? Each to their own. She hasn't had a glass she of hasn't. water or any type she's of She's so dehydrated. Liquid, except for that cum, no, the it, children. Oh, oh, she's she, had a lot of cum, though. But that's it. They end the party by going downstairs holding hands. Now they're just like this cute little couple with a kink, I guess. So that's it. Yeah. Well, end we made it, guys. I'm oh, proud of us. And in a shocking twist of events, we're mixing it up. I have a music reference for us. I love Ellie, which is, so is simply no. Yeah. No. Ellie, again, was not able to find a music reference because she was too traumatized. And after our episode, we've realized the perfect one, and it is Freak on a Leash by Corn. Obviously, like the song itself is actually like, some different content in there, but feeling like a freak on a leash, feeling like I have no release. Wow. It's literally so Jessica. In another shocking twist, Georgia actually has the fan art reference. <laughs> I do. So these are all on Harley's Instagram page. They're by someone called at P-U-H-N-A-T-S-S-O-N. And they have done four drawings of the three clowns and then Manson himself licking the knife. But yes, gives like super creepy vibes. But anyway, next up, we're going to be covering a, another Coho book, Verity. Very excited to dive back into Coho books because she's a fave. This book, again, if you've made it this far, congratulations. You deserve a well-earned drink after that. You do. I think, again, it's all about what you want to read and what you don't want to read and the good thing about novellas is they're so quick and so easy to get through that they give you a taste of what you're going to expect in the main series and then you know I'm not going to bother buying the 400 600 page book because yeah I don't like you know it. you can know if it's up your alley or not without having the full <laughs> commitment exactly we will see you next week covering Verity. Tune in Wednesdays every week and we'll see yeah. you next time. Bye. Bye.